Hello, this is Alex Ratcliffe with Tolari Networks. I'm going to compare a couple of technologies here today. One is the Tolari T730 Adaptive Private Networking Appliance, and the other is the Peplink uh, 380 appliance using the Speed Fusion technology. Um, our goals are the same for both products. We're attempting to aggregate multiple WAN links together from multiple providers. In this case, we have two providers, ISP1 and ISP2. Um, and we have a 20 megabit symmetrical circuit on both sides, and we're aggregating that with a 10 megabit symmetrical circuit. Um, so nothing particularly uh, outlandish here. In our base configuration, our latency and round trip is identical acro across all WAN paths. Um, we're not injecting any loss or jitter initially. Um, and we're just going to try to do a couple of things. One is we're going to have a continuous ping from our client to our test server and we're going to observe the round trip between the two devices. Um, and we're also then going to send, uh, from the same clients, we're going to send iperf traffic, and we're going to use a single TCP flow to see how much throughput we can actually get on, 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 on each, each test bed here. Um, the test beds are identical. We're actually using the same WAN simulator to, to, to simulate the networks here. Um, the, the test clients are identical in, in, in every nature, and the test is, is, is symmetrical. Um, so if we look at our, our, our PEP link configuration, we'll notice that we have two WAN links defined and we're using the, the default settings for everything with one small exception. If we look at the speed fusion, we're actually asking him to detect link failures at the extreme level, under one second. So we can compare that comparatively to the Tolari, which, which automatically detects link failure in a sub-second time frame. So he is constantly monitoring the two paths or the four paths, depending on how he aggregates his paths together. And we're expecting if we fail the link to react very quickly. Um, if we look at the status of the, uh, the speed fusion setup here, and we look at the speed fusion bundle, we can see that we are measuring roughly the same latency um, this is being reported as round trip here in the in the in the uh, pep link, um, and everything looks flat. We're not sending any traffic right now, so there's no loss, no jitter, and the two WAN paths appear to be up. Um, now I'll just minimize that, and we'll look at the Tolari view real quick. So Tolari views the world slightly differently. We actually measure latency, jitter, loss unidirectionally. So our round trip is the aggregate of two paths, and in this case, we fully mesh. The, the, the WAN pass that we have. In this case, we have two WAN links on each side, so effectively, because they're all internet paths, we can see four WAN paths. We believe the PEP link does a, a roughly similar thing. It's actually just very hard to, 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 to validate that through the, through the GUI um, because they don't actually show specific paths. Um, but from failover tests we've done, we see that you know WAN link one can talk to WAN link two on the other side and vice versa. So effectively, I think they have four ways to get through the network. Um, so in this case, we're seeing roughly the same characteristics. We're seeing about 52, 53 milliseconds of date of latency in each direction. We add our best one-way trip time here to our statistical jitter and we get about 53, which translates to around about 106 milliseconds of delay. Right? And in each case, we're prioritizing ping traffic um, over our iperf traffic, uh, which we're, we're not prioritizing at a very high level. So we would expect our ICMP traffic to always get through based on the QoS metrics and methodologies that both, both products are using. And if we look at our test bed here, I'll just minimize the diagram, we'll see that the pings are going. The top one here is the Tolari test bed and we're getting 106 milliseconds, and the bottom one here is the Peplink test bed, and we're getting exactly the same uh, measurement of latency. Nothing particularly clever there. So let's do a very simple fail, failover test here first. I will go to our WAN simulator, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just induce packet loss um, on our WAN paths, and just assume that we've lost uh, connectivity to, to ISP1. And so essentially I just make the loss on that path 100%. And in this case, because it's multi-path, I actually have to do it on four paths here. So this now looks like we've lost any connection to the 10 network in, in both directions. Minimize the WAN simulator, and we'll notice that uh, our, our pings haven't actually changed. So all paths are equal. 
So we failed over from one path being dead to another. And we can actually observe the path failure state in the Talari view here. You'll see that the, the paths using WAN link one are all dead. And we get the same or a similar view of the world from the PEP link. WAN one on this PEP link is dead. Okay, so, so nothing particularly you know, surprising there. Both products are able to detect WAN failure and failover. I will restore the WAN links here and we should observe that those WAN links will come back into service. Uh, but again, all our paths are currently equal, so there's nothing really, uh, really unusual or odd about that. We'll just set the loss back to zero on all the paths and things will start to normalize. Now you'll notice on the Solari, we, no we, we set the WAN link to bad because we're a little skeptical initially when the paths come back up once they've stabilized, normalized, we'll actually uh, bring them back into service and, and mark them good. And the WAN, the PEP link just came back as well and, and starts to show us that, yeah, the WAN path is back. So nothing surprising there. Failover, pretty easy. Okay, so let's just minimize these again. And now let's do a throughput test and let's observe uh, the reality of a throughput test. Again, all WAN links currently are equal. So we'll do PEP link first. So I'm using iperf to send TCP traffic um, between client and server, and we're sending for about 600 seconds here. Okay, so I'm gonna start him off. And this will report every five seconds. So TCP takes a little bit of time to scale up, but already we're sending traffic. And we're getting to 16.8 megs, and slowly cl climbing up here, 17.9. Uh, to 20, 24. So right away we can see we're aggregating more than the, the, the bandwidth of any of our one links and we're topping out at around about 27, 27.3, 27 27.1. Not particularly surprising given the overhead of, of tunneling the traffic and encapsulating it. Right? But whilst this is going on, well let's observe what's happened to our ping here. So right away I'm, no, I'm noticing much higher ping times for our important ICMP traffic here. So the traffic is aggregating fine, but we seem to be uh, not prioritizing the pings out of, out of the box. Or in fact, we're actually getting up to nearly three times the round trip here um, in terms of latency. And uh, that is not, uh, not very good. So, so that's, that's a little concerning. Um, and actually if I stop the ICMP, sorry, if I stop the TCP traffic here, we'll notice that, that all of a sudden now that's gone back to, to normal. So on the default settings, it's not clear as to why the ICMP traffic is being prioritized that way. Okay, all right, so now let's repeat the test on the Talari side. And we'll just make sure our ping is, is, is going there. So again, the same, the same uh, parameters in use here. We're using iperf to send traffic for 600 seconds between the two servers. Okay, I'm gonna start this off. So he's starting to send. And again, this will report in five seconds. Again, it takes a, uh, a little bit of time for the TCP to ramp up. We're up to 26 megabits. A little quicker than the PEP link in terms of ramp. And we're getting to 26.9, 26 26.8. And we're staying there. So we're not quite getting the same throughput as the PEP link. We're off about three or four hundred K. But one very obvious thing is our ICMP traffic still getting properly prioritized through through the network, right? We're always we're getting these packets on the network. They're not being congested by the file transfer here in, in any way. So so clearly QoS is working very effectively here on the on the on the Talari. And not necessarily as effectively on the on the pep link here. So okay, so I'll stop that. Um, but you know, essentially, in terms of aggregating WAN links of equal performance, both devices work very well. So now what we'll do is we'll just look at the stats that are being reported here, and uh, repeat the test and just observe what we see from that. So we're going to go to the pep link here. And we're going to show the the link statistics and they actually do have a, a, a quite a nice graphing package here that will show you the, the throughput on each of the two WAN links in real time. I'll just make that a little bit smaller so we can see that and I'm going to do exactly the same test 
So we're going to send TCP traffic. And both WAN links are starting to send traffic. And they're both going up. So this one is the 20 meg link up here. And you can see he's actually seesawing. But at the same time as him sending traffic, we're, he's also now measuring a very high level of latency. And these little triangles also indicate drop packets. Now, there is no loss being induced in, in, the, in, the, in the network, in the WANSIM network. So why, given the fact that the PEP link knows how much bandwidth he has on each WAN link, why is he trying to send more than the WAN link can handle and also dropping packets and, and creating the latency that we're measuring over here on the pings? This doesn't appear to be as intelligent as the Solari. So I'm going to stop this and we're just going to repeat the same test. And we're going to observe what's happening on the Solari view. Now, I don't have quite the same charting ability to show that in real time on the Tolari, but I can see it on the paths here that I'm aggregating bandwidth on the paths, and this updates every five seconds. So as this thing starts to ramp, you'll notice that because I'm truly multipath, I can show you exactly which way the traffic is going. So I'm sending most of the traffic WAN 1 to WAN 1, but I'm also load balancing from WAN 2 to both WAN 1 and WAN 2. No real reason for this. The latency across each path is pretty much identical, so we get the same result. But it's intelligent, and we notice that our measurement of quality, our latency measurement, is still very much the same. We're still seeing 50 milliseconds of actual latency around trip. Um, we're not seeing any packet loss because we're not inducing any packet loss. I'm not trying to overrun that circuit like we saw with the PEP link. Um, and in fact, you know, as we look at our, our test bed here, our pings are still 107 milliseconds. Yes, we are sacrificing a tiny amount of throughput, but what's worse? You know, do we want to crush the important applications when we're getting high bandwidth usage, or do we want things to work effectively and appropriately? Okay, so nothing particularly, particularly uh, 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 exciting about this, because again, the WAN links are all exactly the same.